Initial Assessment and Management Primary Survey. This is an important lecture, probably the most important in the ATLS course, and the time is very essential in the management of an acutely injured trauma patient because death occurs within 10 minutes, that is brain death, after cessation of breath, and there is progressive deterioration in any in severely injured patient with time. There is therefore a need for rapid and systematic approach to the patient which is given by the ATLS course. The objectives of this lecture are 1. To identify the correct sequence of priorities in managing a multiple injured patient. 2. Apply the primary and secondary survey in patient management. Conduct initial resuscitation and plan definitive care. We also need to determine the mechanism of injury from the history and anticipate any pitfalls a patient may be prone to. In the skill stations, we also manage a simulated multiple trauma patient using this approach. There are four steps in ATLS and these are in order of importance, primary survey resuscitation which proceeds hand in hand with primary survey, secondary survey and then definitive care. The primary survey can be remembered following the mnemonic A, B, C, D and this illustrates the priorities in management. A stands for airway with Swiss spine control, B stands for breathing that is assessment of uh, ventilation, C stands for circulation and hemorrhage control, D stands for disability, in other words neurological status, and E is important to expose the patient and make sure that as we do so, we do not expose the patient to hypothermia. A stands for airway, and the preparation we do in airway is we have to have ready suction equipment, oxygen, all patients are given oxygen, airway equipment which should be tested and endotracheal tubes and oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airways, ambu bag and drugs in case we need to intubate, RSI means rapid sequence intubation. When you come to assess the patient for airway management, a very quick assessment is to speak to the patient and see how they respond. If a patient responds clearly, it means they understand and they have a patent airway. And understanding means they are alert or uh, neurologically sound. If a patient is unconscious, then the airway is at risk and we need to take measures to secure that airway, as we will see. This diagram shows oropharyngeal airways and these are devices that are used to keep the airway patent in a patient who is unconscious who does not have a gag reflex. Whereas uh, these are nasopharyngeal airways for a patient who has a gag reflex. We normally intubate patients whose airway is compromised or who will require much longer management because it's the best way to secure an airway. And if we do not succeed in intubation, we can do a rapid surgical airway, for example, cricothyrotomy, which can be needle cricothyrotomy or surgical cricothyrotomy. These are illustrated better in the airway lecture. When we come to B, the first step, that is assessment, is to check for the adequacy of breathing and we do this by checking the ventilation and listening to breath sounds bilaterally. We also check the respiratory rate and we examine the chest for any serious injuries that can compromise respiratory mechanics. And the interventions we put in place, if a patient is not breathing properly or at all, we assist ventilation using an ambu bag. And if the patient has chest injuries that will compromise their breathing, then we intervene accordingly. 
in circulation first step is to check for pulses check for capillary refill and blood pressure and we control hemorrhage st we stop bleeding however we do not clamp bleeders blindly because this can result in injury to neurovascular structures in circulation the interventions are we establish an intravenous access and draw blood for the requisite tests we insert a central venous pressure line especially in severely injured or uh, patients or patients in shock because we need to monitor central venous pressure and then we give intravenous fluids the protocol is to give two liters of fringus lactate rapidly and monitor for response the tests that we commonly order group and cross match in case we need to transfuse the patient remember the patient most likely is losing blood we also do hemogram and hematocrit and we monitor the urine output because it is the best way of assessing general perfusion of the body in disability the first assessment which is rapid is using the AVPU scale where A stands for alert V stands for patient who responds to voice P for patient who responds to pain and U for the unresponsive patient we also quickly assess the pupils for their size and reaction because any unequal pupils will signify it's a lateralizing sign and indicate a focal intracranial lesion and brisk reaction is also required if the reaction is slow then there could be several reasons for this either intracranial injury or a systemic problem that affects consciousness the Glasgow comma scale can be done if we have time we usually intubate the patient if they have a Glasgow comma scale of less than 8 which is the clinical definition of comma and we call a neurosurgeon early if the Glasgow comma scale is less than 8 or the pupils are unequal or the patient has any other lateralizing signs for example uh, hemiplegia or monoplegia the last step of uh, primary survey is exposure and this we undress the patient completely and then we log roll the patient and check the back then this requires three persons but when we ro log roll the patient we make sure that the patient is protected from hypothermia by warming the room and also by covering the patient not exposing him when we're not examining and by giving warm intravenous fluids the following aid in primary survey that is uh, usually it's good to put a patient early on a vital size monitor which monitors the ECG the oxygenation respiratory rate pulse and blood pressure this way we can check our vital signs continuously and know the status of our patient and our resuscitation efforts we also as alluded to earlier insert a urinary catheter to monitor general body perfusion and an nasogastric tube is needed to decompress the stomach because when you bug the patient sometimes you put air in the stomach also using an nasogastric tube reduces the risk of vomiting and aspiration we do three x-rays at the end of primary survey and these x-rays are a lateral c-spine x-ray an anterior posterior chest x-ray and a pelvic x-ray these are done routinely because these are the commonest sites of significant injury and when we do this x-rays we can quickly rule out any injuries in these areas we then go to the secondary survey 
but before we do so, we reassess the patient's vital signs. That is, a, we reassess the patient's ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. We want to see whether our resuscitation is effective, and airway patency. Check airway patency. Consider whether we need to transfuse the patient or give more blood, and whether there are any other interventions required. Thank you for your attention.